There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Time to come to church now. These sure gals behind me, they were the dick. I thought they were going. Anyway, is there any announcements tonight? Yes. with Christian kindness so that we can make sure we have plenty of Christian volunteers in there. Now I'm going to tell you, there's 130 kids a day, Tuesdays and Thursdays, between the hours of 2 and 7 o'clock, that is a great mission field for anybody that all you got to do is show up and be a friend, you know, turn on the love of Jesus, a little shake and shine, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and seriously, try to make a connection. And, and and we're we're they're we're, we're they're feeding kids there. They're they're giving them a place to go so that they don't have to go home to empty places. And there's food there, and there's people there, and there's different things for them to there. Unfortunately, there's also you know probably some bad stuff. So as many people as we can possibly get, I really really would appreciate, encourage you greatly if you would. Between the hours of 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, even if you can only do a few hours, you don't have to commit yourself to even every week. 
but whatever you could do would really greatly be appreciated. The phone number's got, I believe we'll have, if you don't, if we don't get it up there, I'll tell you, you come see me and I'll get it for you. Um, the, do what? Oh, okay. Well, and, and there's new, there's, there's, there's trips they're planning to do and everything that we could also be part of as far as chaperones and things like that. So, anyway, I just want to put that out there, Joe, okay? So, anybody, if you need any info, more information, let me know. We'll be glad. We're looking to possibly do a, a Bible study there with, with, with the youth. And so, we're just trying to do whatever we can so that we can have as much influence there as possible. Okay? That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, any other announcements? Yeah, it is. Anybody got any praise reports tonight? Yes. Um, our friend that we were talking about that we um, said about her lungs, she had like the, the nodules on her lungs. Her doctor called her this past weekend and said, I know I'm on vacation, but I just wanted you to know it's not cancer. Oh, yeah, so oh, it's just some type of something. It's a long word that she's supposed to take steroids and stuff for, but it's not lymphoma like they call it. Good. 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 Um, my sister Jean called me today and said why it's doing better. You know, he's been going through those cancer treatments. He's doing better, and um, they just want to follow colonoscopy to 26. But she said keep on praying because we know that prayer, prayer is the key right there. So he's doing better. That's good. Excellent. Yes. I just want to keep encouraging people to do the small stuff. I had another call this week or last week, and um, it, 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 it was somebody at Hawaii and Oahu, and so we got into a lot of that stuff, and, and just it was a joyous call. She started out, she didn't even want to hardly talk about it, and ended up, and she said she could hear the love in my voice and everything, of course, and then I'm going, oh, you know, and anyhow, and I told her, I said, well, that's because God made me to love. I know that was my purpose, and, and, and just went on and talking and everything, and I encouraged her and talking about praying, and I've been encouraging her ever since, but that it ended up that I brought her into Jesus before the end of the call and it was just one of those wonderful moments and it all was just because I was listening and sharing the love of Jesus and God and we can do that if I can do that over the phone we all can do it in person okay Amen. that's all I'm saying Amen. and she told me by the end of the call she says I don't even remember why I called I know I was so mad but I have no clue what it was about that I told her I said don't you worry your pretty little head about that Renee I'm going to take care of that. You just concentrate on talking to God and finding the God and worshiping the church. Amen. Okay. Do it. That's good. You know, I just, this week, it's just been overwhelming with things that need to be done. And um, today, you know, I, I'm encouraged that the Lord sees you where you are and He gives you everything that you need at the moment that you need it. No matter what. Like, like, we didn't have school today, and that was such a blessing because I got to get my refrigerator cleaned out. And I know that that sounds trivial, but it's something that's bothered me so much. And, you know, it's like, it's like God just, you know, he takes care of problems, and he takes care of illness, and he takes care of, of my friends. Like, I went to visit Terry, and she's doing really good. And, you know, it's, you just got to kind of look at, look at life like, like, you know, God sees our need, and He showers those that He loves tremendously with blessings. So, just very encouraged about that today. Right on. Yes. So, right on. Yes. I just like to add on to that just a little bit. Even He gives you stuff that you want to. You know, I lost a lot of hair when I had COVID. I lost a lot. It just wasn't coming in, and I think that's prayer for friends. I think, gosh, that's kind of vain, but I didn't want to lose my hair. And I went to the hairdresser last uh, Saturday, and she's like, you got a lot of hair coming in. And now I've got all these little spikes coming out. And I was like, oh, no. God, I'm like a shot, but I'm praising God for my wild, my wild hairs. Okay, any other? 
praise you for it. Okay, how about prayer requests? Prayer request. I got one. Okay. Um, my mom's asthma is really bad right now, and her her insurance of switching from Tennessee to Ohio hasn't kicked in yet. So just she's going to call tomorrow to see if they can start it early, um, rather in April, so that she can go get her asthma taken care of. So just pray that everything just kind of happens as it's supposed to. To um, so she doesn't have big bills if she goes to the doctor. So, sure. um, my sister Jean uh, said that she had to go to the eye doctor this morning. She cannot see out of her left eye, and they said that if there's swelling or something behind the retina, so she's going to have some more uh, tests done on that. So she said, please have the church to pray. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, Teddy Offerman, she used to actually go here, but um, her sister lives in Alabama, and they're ready to get smacked with some tornadoes, so just pray for them, because she said there's one headed right for her county, her okay. sister's county. Mm -hmm. um, I've been having some car trouble. Um, yeah. Um, my truck actually, like, I had to kill it the other day, going down the road, I had to stop it and throw it up in a neutral, because I was worried the motor was going to blow, so... Um, just prayer and what to do. I've been begging it and just praying on it to be, just to be guided to make the right decision on what to do as far as vehicle. I've only had this in about three months. So, oh, no. <laughs> just, I've not had good luck with vehicles in the last year. So. Did you check the oil? Yeah. <laughs> That's the last time you've done oil. that before. Yeah, the last time we've done that. All those red lights. So, <laughs> check the oil. It did require oil. <laughs> Yo, anything else? Oh, yeah. We have a gentleman at work. He's 65 years old, and he ate to work today. They were starting to get worried about him. They called his emergency contact, and they went to his house and got him out. Oh, 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 it's not getting a ton of news coverage, surprisingly, but the nation of Myanmar over in Southeast Asia is basically has had a military coup about a month ago and um, our well my, my wife's brother's wife's mother there we go, um, is friends with some pastors who are over there and they're basically reporting stuff that you're not hearing and like there's basically mass killings this you know anytime there's protests people protesting against this Two government that's come in, they're basically just opening up, opening fire on them, literally killing dozens of people at a time. Um, just, and it was apparently a democratically elected government that had been overthrown over there. So just pray for stability and peace in that in that country over there. Okay, anyone else? There's a list. What? Danielle. Yeah. The latest name is Vicki Keaton. Um, I'm not Virus. Oh. Yeah. So, a number of those. Billy Martin's in Cancun with coronavirus, <laughs> and, and it goes on, you know. Uh, Deb Bowman. Erica. Erica. Veronica. Veronica. Deb Bowman. I'm, I'm missing names, but. Susan Herman. Susan. 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 Deb Snyder. Diane Hunt. Paula Roberts. Paula, Paula, Paula Roberts. Paula she getting out word now? Yeah. The ladies were wild at that party. I said, we're going to get some on each other. Everybody in here remember Randy. Do you remember him? He was, he got a letter from me today. And he, he is, uh, that guy's really going. I mean, he is really going. You, you wouldn't believe what Randy is. He was not the same Randy. He just got back from a, a taking a team into. They did a Bible club there at the place. Yeah. And now they're taking a team to Costa Rica. They're going to be taking a team to Costa Rica, possibly. And I want you to do tremendous report. Okay, where else? And somebody back there. Oh, yeah, somebody back there. <laughs> 
haven't yet. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
referred to as God winks. So sometimes it happens that quick sometimes, I think, that when we get a blessing, if we don't pay attention to it, we're going to miss it. You know, and when they refer to him as God winks, I think that's so appropriate because, you know, it's nothing to him to bless us, you know, because that's what he wants to do. And, you know, he's the one, the one true God. So he has nobody to question, nobody to answer to. All he has to do is do his will. And he wants us to be a big part of that. And he's going to bless us with his God winks daily. As long as we keep him as the center, as our one true God. One voice in the dark. A song that lights up the stars. One breath. That gives life one sovereign in power who speaks with thunder and fire, one Lord, one King. There is no other that can compare to you. You are the one alone. Oh, 
you to count on him. And he's counting on you. It goes both ways. God loves you and he wants the best for you, but he also wants you to share that with everything else. So this is kind of like a duty he's calling us to. It's not, we can't be selfish with God's love. We got to show the world God's love. He was, he was merciful and gave it to us in the first place. He wants us to show the rest of the world. He wants us to help them open that door. We're not going to give them God. We're going to help them find their God, our God. So we can count on him that if we do what we're supposed to do, he will do what he is supposed to do because he's told us he would. So we've got to hold on to that. We've got to be willing to say yes. We've got to be willing to do it until that promise of the resurrection, which is what we are all counting on from him. I count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will take you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your day. Yes, I will sleep for joy.
you, God. We thank you and we praise you. Tonight, we praise you for resurrecting us. We praise you for resurrecting yourself first, Lord, and for promising and keeping all the promises that you gave to us. God, we know that there's our days when we feel defeated. We know that there's our days when we feel like we need to be lifted out of the ashes, Lord. And we just thank you and praise you, Lord, that you are the answer, that we can count on you. Help us, Lord, to realize that every day. Help us to look for the God wings. Help us to look for anything and everything, Lord, as we see as an opportunity. Lord, to see you in our lives and to express that to others. God, it's a time. It's a time when we need to show the world what we have and hope. God, because there is nothing out there that man holds that can have any hope. Lord, and everything just seems to get, the more they try to fix things, the more they mess things up. God, and we know that that is not what you want your people to trust in. We know, Lord, that that's not the future you want us to, to look to. We don't, you don't want us worrying about it. You don't want us thinking about it. Lord, you want us to think about you because you hold all the answers. You are the key. Lord, you're the hope for everyone in this world, Lord. And we just need to share that. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for those opportunities. Help us to see them clearly. Lord, help us to be strong, Lord, and motivated to do that. And we just pray, Lord, that you continue to help us grow spiritually, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to be strong on the inside. And by doing that, Lord, we just thank you that we have an opportunity to come here tonight, Lord, to be able to delve together into your word, Lord, as a group, as your children. We just thank you and praise you for the leaders that you've placed in our church, Lord, that gives us that opportunity. We just pray that you continue to bless them, guide them and direct them, Lord, and help to feed us in the path that you want us to take, Lord, so that our church can be everything you want it to be during this time period. We love you and we praise you, God, and we ask you for all your richings, all your blessings, Lord. And Lord, help us to be able to count on you so you can count on us. We love you. We praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Da, 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 da. I thought you were going to hug me. <laughs> All right. Name, your name. You scared me there, Deb. You scared me. Hey, good to see everybody. Thanks for coming to church. I say that every time, so you ought to be getting used to that, right? Every single time I say them exact same words. What? Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. You're welcome. All the time welcome, all the time welcome. So glad you're here. What? <laughs> Speaking of doing stuff with a place, I wasn't going to say nothing. But these deacons are getting a little crazy around here. I just want you to know. No, I'm not going to tell anyone. They're meeting after, they're meeting after church tonight. They don't need me. They don't need me. They do not need me. I don't know what you did. Hey, she was in trouble, and you gave high five. And you're like on strike three, I think. You're really up here. Up here. So, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Hey, good to see everybody. Thanks for coming to church. I said that. I have a lot to say. Uh, worried about our sick people. Worried a lot about our sick people. I'm glad to hear Terry. When did you see Terry? Just yesterday, today? Oh, okay. She does say she's doing really well. So, ladies, let me say something to you if I can. And I'm not trying to. you got a million things to do. A lot of ladies have sickness right now. And just pick up your phone and call them. Would you call them? You know, it's kind of strange for us men to talk. I, as a pastor, I can call for a minute. I say, hey, how you doing? You know. She Billy's okay. Yeah, so Vicky Keaton, Vicky Keaton. I'm a little worried about Vicky. Vicky's, 
Vicki Keaton, Deb Bullman. Um, Deb's been trying to get out. Deb's actually doing really good. She's trying to spread it to the whole town. She really is. You know, she got coronavirus. She's in the laundry room. She's in the hallway. She's up and down. She call, she's doing her exercise bike in the hallway. <laughs> Oh, it's true. John, I got those notes for you up on my desk. I didn't bring them down if you want to get them. John was the only one to ask for notes on, I don't know if he's trying to get Charlie's position. He's trying to get Charlie's position, right? On, on the question, Jesus, what? Well, that's what happens. Here's what usually happens. I preach on Wednesday night, and then John would go to the jail, and he'd use all my stuff on Monday night at the jail. And it, so... Yeah, then you tell me it better be new, right? Because I already used that, right? <laughs> so that music was so good. So good, so good. Dana told me he wasn't going to tell me if he was going to leave after music. He left. Okay. But that music was really good. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, that Rachel situation. Rachel was a little girl group in her church here. Dana's little girl, Rachel. And she's got something going on. And they're running some pretty serious tests on her. There he is right there. I just said I thought you left. So, <laughs> go give him a high five. What? Okay. <sighs> I don't know if I covered everything or not, but there's people that. Listen, a phone call is important. Little stuff, little stuff's important. So, trying to call and care and and uh, express our love for each other. And I, I don't know. I sometimes I think in a church that's been through what we've been through, um, uh, the Lord spoke to me one time when I was praying up here, and He said to me. I'll never send you more people till you can care for the ones you have. So I've always kind of tried to remember that and and uh, till we do a good job caring for the ones we have. So what we'd love to see is the Lord do great things here, right? People are asking me, people are asking me, is there a great worldwide revival coming? The Bible says there'll be a great falling away. But in the churches that are on fire, you're going to see the greatest move of God you've ever seen. You're going to see, I'm telling you're going to see, you're going to see first century, first generation stuff. It's going to just break loose. It's going to break loose. Okay. So in the on church, on fire churches. So you got to be that church. You got to be that church. Okay. And uh, man, I'm trying to throw sparks. I'm just trying to throw sparks. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. So we're glad you're here. We are very thankful for you. Um, man, that looks good. <laughs> Father, thanks for time together tonight. We love you. We do, we do. From Leanne, way back there in the back. Henry's up there in the corner. Lord, to, to Norma, who's not here. Hallelujah. If I could get every name, Lord, I'd list them all right now. But for every person that's sick, Lord, every person, for Paula, for everyone that's sick, Lord, I pray you just touch them. For Erica, for Terry, for Vicki, Lord. Hallelujah. For Veronica. Hallelujah. For each one, Lord, for each one, for each one. Hallelujah. Thank you for time together, Lord. We thank you for that good music. That music was just flat awesome. Lord, we had a good experience here, just lifting your name up and enjoying time singing together. God, would you just, we've, we've, we've come so far in that. Would you just explode this building and worship? God, would you cause us to be, would you cause the yawners to be worshipers, Lord? Just let it catch fire. Let us sing with all our heart, Lord. Praise to you. Lord, I, 
I've stood before this church for a number of years. And uh, Lord, you stand with me. And I don't know what to say or do, Lord, to inspire them in, in, the, in the difficult places we're in, in the time we live in, unless you fill my mouth with words. So we need your help, we need your strength, we need creativity that comes from you. We need to develop stuff, God, that is, that is of the heart of God, Lord, for the church of this day. That we develop the ideas of the love of God and the goodness of God and the greatness of God. Lord, that, that we would be inspired by the word of God to love you with all the... God, that we just lay down our nets. Help us, Lord, in all those things. Thank you for all the good stuff that surrounds us. Thank you, Lord. We don't say thank you enough. So we just say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for, for this day. Lord, that we're healthy and, and we've come through a lot, Lord. We thank you for what we've come through as a church. Mm. And we will bless you, Lord. We will bless you. We, we proclaim this place will be a place that lifts you up proclaims your goodness, proclaims salvation over those that are lost. I pray, God, that you send people in, Lord, that need loved on. And, God, that we are faithful in those things you give us to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for those that are struggling, Lord. Otherwise, there's some depression and anxiety that Lord you just have to help in all that you have to pray for that Jesus and meet us here this very night Lord I pray thank you Lord in Jesus name amen we're uh, we're off the questions that Jesus asked and we're, we're kind of headed towards um, Easter now we're going to head towards Easter uh, one of the first events on that road is uh, how Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. So we're going to focus on the Garden of Gethsemane story tonight. There's a thing that Bruce Blevins turned me on to. Uh, it's old in terms of its appearance. It's a one-man actor that's acting as the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. He's He was the guy that played Herbie or not Herbie, played on the love bug, and Dean Jones is the guy's name, and he's a just a sold-out Christian, and he's doing these one-man dramas, but he's John, the Apostle John. It's an hour and a half long. We're, we're going to cut out the Gethsemane part, the, the prayer part, okay? So John was with him in the garden. We're going to pick up there. You're going to get a feel for this thing. I, it's, it's, it's old feeling. It's... The young people look at it and go, ooh. But there's enough new information from John the Apostles. He's really studied the book of John that it was worth an hour and a half for me to listen to just to really try to get the mind of the Apostle John. And here he is on the island of Patmos. He's in a cave, and he's just telling, they, they he's talking about how God was giving him a revelation, but how they're asking him to write a gospel. So he's starting to kind of, and he's got a little scribe, if you've watched the whole thing, he's got a little scribe writing some. So he's trying, telling some of the stories that he tells as though the Lord was reminding him of the things he puts in his book. Okay? So he has a little bit on the, the Garden of Gethsemane here. It's about four minutes. It's old, but there's good stuff in it. Okay? So when you see him, you'll laugh. John on the Isle of Patmos, elderly there he is. Don't be afraid of what the world will do to us now. I've overcome the world. And then Jesus prayed that none of us be lost in what was coming. And we followed him out into the clear starry night. Up the dark ravine of Kidron, along the temple walls, 
their drains gushing the blood of thousands of Passover lambs now being slaughtered on the altars within. I'll never forget the feeling that came over me when I watched Jesus step across that coursing scarlet flood. Before long, we'd come to our favorite garden spot, Gethsemane. He asked Peter and James and me to, to stay near him while he prayed. And in the moonlight, we, we saw him cast himself to the ground, stricken of soul. We, we, we wanted to go to him and give him what comfort we could, but, but we, we, we never interfered with his times of prayer. I, I sat down against an olive tree. What seemed like only a moment. I let my eyes close. And the next thing I knew, Jesus' hand was on my shoulder. On his face. What dark sweat. Like drops of blood. And oh, the sadness in his voice. John, could you not watch with me this little while? My best friend, my Lord, had been in the lake of fire. I'd been asleep. Peter cries out a warning. Yes, Peter. Yes, I, I see them. Helmets, spears, torches coming up from Kidron. Master, we must leave here. But master, master, they're coming to arrest us. But uh, Peter, he... Look. Leading them. Judas! The soldiers sweep in through the gates. Jesus steps forward and confronts the captain. Who do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth! I am he. The soldiers fall backward to the ground. Such was Jesus' power over them had he chosen to use it. Again, Jesus commands the captain. It is I you want. Let these go. The captain hesitates, bewildered by his own weakened will, then motions to his men. Peter leaps forward, sword in hand, and cuts off the ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. Jesus intervenes. Peter! Put away that sword. Shall I not drink this cup that the Father has given me? With that, I panicked. I ran into the Olive Grove. Coward that I was, I, I hid myself among the trees. Somehow in the moon shadows, Peter finds me. He wants to follow the retreating line of torches. And I say, no, Peter. No, they, 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 they let us go once. They, 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 they won't again, Peter. Why should we risk that? Because we love him. But, but Peter... Yes, because we love him. Pretty good. Isn't that pretty good? So hour and a half long, he tells the whole, he's he probably pretty funny in parts, you know, but uh, there's a couple of different things going on. He talks about being in this cave and, and some of the rats in the cave, and he names them, he named two of them, uh, uh, Caiaphas and... and, and, and and Anna, and because he said they were always together. That Chi Caiaphas and who is it? And, and, yeah, that one. The two high priests. Why can't I think of that? And then anyhow, but then 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 there's a, a captain of the guard that comes and visits him, and he gets these books like gospel book, Luke's book, come in. So he leaves it out, and the and the guard has to confiscate it. So. He, he actually says, this is the only writings I got. I get these every so often, you know what I mean? But I left it out because Luke's book was written much earlier than John's. So he leaves it out. And by the end, he wins the captain of the guard to the Lord. Anyhow, so it's, it's a pretty good thing. It's, if you can handle an hour and a half of that, it's pretty good. But there's enough biblical detail in it. It really gets you in the mind of John. 
kind of walking through the gospel. It's really something special. So anyhow, that's uh, that. And we're going to read here. We're, we're going to pick Mark's version tonight. Is that okay? Peter, you know, Mark is Peter's story told by Mark. You know that, right? So you always see Peter in Mark's story, and it's kind of interesting to see Peter's account. And, and uh, that, that, that fellow there that just did that, he said that Peter started carrying a knife a sword when he told Jesus I'll never let them kill you I'll never let them take you he started carrying it of course Jesus looked at him and uh, how did he do that oh he said get behind me Satan that's what he said to him but Peter started carrying a sword because he looked at the Lord and he said I'll never let you take him so that's that's and you kind of catch that in some of the stuff that that guy does and it's good okay Mark's version of that okay so we're in Mark 14. This story is also, it's in all four Gospels. So when you see stories in all four Gospels, it's really got an important. Mark 14, Matthew 26, Luke 22, John 18. Four Gospels. There's rarely, I can't say rarely, but it's not always common that some, a story's in all four Gospels unless it's super important, okay? Here's Mark's account. Then they came to the place which was called Gethsemane. And said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Now, what you're starting to hear a lot more, and we, we kind of got on it a little bit last year, was this idea, as he's praying in the garden, is the same time the Jews are slaughtering the Passover lambs. Okay? And he passes down. I don't know if you caught it there in the beginning. How they, they went to the garden. They went down by the temple and down the old wall and down the hill, you know, across the Kidron Valley. And... That Kidron Valley, there's a little stream there, and the blood of all these sacrificial lambs that were being killed, all the Jews in the town were, that blood was draining. They were washing it down these drains. That were, and he, as he crosses the little bridge that goes over to Gethsemane, the Kidron Brook that's there is full of blood of the sacrificial lambs that were being killed at that very same moment in time. So Jesus, it's so crazy how he's walking out the whole Passover. This is happening in perfect timing. You wonder, they, they couldn't do anything to Jesus until then. Because the Passover lamb had to be killed at Passover. And God does have a perfect timing. He really does have a perfect timing. I, God has a perfect timing in your life. There's, there's things that aren't ripe yet for you I know that sounds funny but there are things God has for you and they're just not ripe yet right and I, I found with me if I get ahead of God uh, if I get ahead of God I'm worried about him running me over when he goes if I get behind God he drags me you, you know what I'm saying? so I just want to be walking with him I just want to be walking and a whole bunch about our teaching tonight is going to be surrendering to the will of God you know, it starts getting real sad. The story here that a perfect man, hey, with with a with a motive to come and love, to give of himself, uh, did nothing wrong, and, and we're just at the beginning of this story in the in the gospel here, where Jesus he gives him. They they don't take his life. John goes on that that apostle there says when 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 they get to Calvary, you know, he tells the whole story all the way through Calvary that the two thieves are screaming and yelling and the whole thing. And he says that Jesus was the one who walked up and laid down on his cross without making a noise. And the verse that he fulfilled was, um, they weren't going to take his life, he was going to lay it down. So there's just stuff, there's, there's information in that that really makes you connect. So uh, what I wanted to do was put a map up here for you, and it's just kind of as we go into the whole Easter season. You know, Bethany's over here, these are little villages outside. It was 1.2 miles from that place there. Be I never can say that. Beth, how do you say that? That place. Okay? And that place was 1.8 miles to Jerusalem. And, and Jesus would stay outside of town every night and during Passion Week. He would stay out there. He would stay over there. A lot of times he stayed with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. You know? And so he would retreat. Jesus rarely stayed in the city. But he'd... He'd walk this walk, and, but I wanted you to see there's kind of where the temple is. Uh, the Last Supper is down here. The, the, 
the garden tomb and the crucifixion is over that way. And that's old Jerusalem, you know, that's city of David. That's So what would happen was on this night he went down, see the Kidron Valley in between in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's a little bit out of scale. The Kidron Valley is very close to the temple wall there, the temple court. The Garden of Gethsemane is not far at all. In fact, before church I was, I just Google an earth, man. I've. I'm a Google Earth crazy guy. I love to just drop down. I can drop down on the Mount of Olives, and I can look from the Mount of Olives right across the, 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 the Garden of Gethsemane, right up the hill, you know, to see the old wall of the, of the city, you know, and on into the Temple Mount. And it's just, it's still there. It's still right there. They built churches in every site. It's just kind of funny. They built churches in every site, you know, I think for tourism or I don't know, maybe they're going to have church there, but they got so many bars around them now that I don't know how they're... Anyhow. So, what was important to Jesus was praying. We, we, I'm just telling you, we do not put enough time, energy, and effort. Let me do it this way. Not convict you. I don't put enough time, energy, and effort into praying. I fight this thing that I feel like the Lord has dealt with me about recently. I told you that, that you know, I got, I got people trying to tell me what to do, and, and I, uh, and I kind of said, Lord, do people think I'm stupid? Why is everybody tell me what to do? And the Lord said, that's what you do to me. So I've tried to get out of the mode, but I'm caught between that thing where I want to be persistent and asking God, you know what I mean, but not trying to tell God how to do it. I, I mean, some of us are as vain as me and, and try to tell God how I want this to be done. When he knows better than me. A guy once told me one time, the Lord just wants to, to hear you talk to him. The Lord loves you so much, he likes... He, You know, I do like to hear when my wife calls me. I do. She'd probably call me to tell me to do something and how to do it. I'm kidding. But I do like to hear my wife when she calls me. I do like to listen. I've thought about that at times. That You know, I really have. I thought about, here's the girl I love talking to me. She cares about me. She's trying to run my, no, never mind. Uh, and how much I just enjoy Hey, having a close relationship, right? And what kind of relationship do you have with God if you don't spend time? You're probably like me. We get up, we get busy. I try to pray in the morning. I try to pray every morning because I think it's so important to pray in the morning. I like, I know this sounds crazy. I like to have a little bit of the radio on in the morning, sometimes to listen to the news. I like to have a little bit of Christian music on. Lord, usually in the, the music that comes on in my morning is the song for the day, kind of, sort of, for me, you know, and it's speaking to me all. I, know, I don't know how that works, but it just works for me like that. And I, I kind of get that. It's the right song, and the Lord's speaking to me some of that. And I just try to say, Lord, it's me. I know I got two choices today. I know I got two choices. I can do it my way or I can do it your way. That, that's my choices, right? I guess I could do nothing. I probably could. But that might be my way. So, I mean, what, what, do, we, what do we pray for every morning, you know? God, I can either do it your way or I can do it my way. And I am a fool to choose my way right so that's what I pray and for most of us it's really easy to talk to talk it's a lot harder to walk a walk right so then we have to go through our day trying to surrender right they put with the place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Isn't that weird? They it was having a prayer meeting with Jesus while I'm praying. That's kind of like uh, how it works sometimes, you know. In church, hey, let's pray. And the only the guy in the front prays, you know what I mean? And everybody else is kind of like, oh, my gosh, that's long. 
Lori prayed the best old prayer tonight. Did you guys catch that? She prayed a little bit long, but it was really good. It was really, like, good. I'm like, Lord, just go. It's about praying, and I let that, turn that girl on. Just let her, just go. And she did, and it was wonderful. Right? So sit here while I pray. Now, let me tell you something. That isn't what God wants. God wants you participating. No bench sitters in the family of God. No bench sitters in this thing we're doing, right? Everybody gets in the game. Everybody everybody brings something. Everybody, everybody, right? And I'm not trying. I want to tell you something right now. In saying that, nobody's trying to measure you. Nobody in here is worthy to be your judge. There's one worthy to be your judge, and, and it's not me. I'll tell you that right now. So you just work it out between, work out your salvation with God with fear and trembling. You just work it out. You work out where you are and what you're doing, but hurry up. You're running out of time. Right? Blessed are those when he comes that are found doing so the Lord wants us active, loving God Christians to be doing something, right? And he doesn't want us sitting around while the other guy prays. Yeah? So if it's important for Jesus to pray. Now, my understanding of Jesus was he was there from the beginning. He knew the whole plan beginning. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning, and the end, right? So he knew the whole thing the whole way. So What's the problem here? Why does Jesus got to pray? He kind of knows the script, doesn't he? He kind of knows what he got to pray. Why? Just tell me. Why does Jesus have to pray? What? Relationship with the Father. But there's still a human. You're going to see it here. There's still a human flesh that if he doesn't have a close relationship with the Father, that, I'm just telling you. And every one of us, that's true. If we don't have a relationship with the Father, hey, then our human flesh, I said something on Sunday. It, it, here's how it works. Here's how it works. God is trying to get a hold of your heart. Your old brain is just going to be your old brain until something you passionately love begins to influence that old brain. You catching that? Now, how does your brain change, or your heart change? I'm sorry, the heart change. How does your heart change? What? Yeah, but often, well, how's it go? Faith comes by hearing. And I've told you this before. I'm trying to get this all connected in my own head, you know? My ear is connected directly to my heart. It's so funny how my ear can bypass. You know how upset you get when somebody says something you don't like? You know what I mean? How quickly, how powerful words are. Listen, if you could hear a word and it went straight to your brain, you'd process that and, and reject or accept or whatever, you know, and, and not let it. But because it goes straight to your heart, what I realize is my ear is, hey, what fuels my heart. You catching that? Your eyes can get you in trouble, Right? But your ears, if you fill your ears, that's why hearing preaching, hey, music, you know what I mean? All that stuff does something emotionally to your heart. And when your heart starts getting moved by that, or you just know God. I know this sounds crazy. Or you just know God on an intellectual level. You just know God for a, which is, you can know God that way. But I'm telling you, I want to know God all the way. Right? So, sit here while I pray. I wish I had jumped up and said, No! No, Lord, let's pray with you. There was a lot going on in the moment, though. I want to tell you, he dropped a lot on them, and they were, you know what I mean, and it was late at night, and some people say that he was in the garden between 8 and 9 o'clock. That's what... That's what they kind of think because they, they time out how long the trials took and how far they had to walk and what had to happen and all that stuff. So they think that it was dark there, but it was between 8 and 9 o'clock. I watched something today where they went to the Garden of Gethsemane at midnight. So some people may believe it was midnight 
So there's a variation, but most people say because of the trials and everything that had to happen, it, it probably they grabbed Jesus about 9 o'clock at night. So they finished dinner, finished supper. It didn't take that long to wash 12 men's feet. He, he prayed over them. That was a big, long prayer, but it didn't take forever. And after supper, they go to the garden, and Jesus is going to pray. And he took Peter and James and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Now, 11 guys go to the garden. You know, there's some verses I kind of struggle with, you know what I mean? Why did Jesus take these three? You know, we know there was three that were closer. But maybe, maybe because maybe, maybe because these are the three that will stay awake. Maybe these will be the three that will actually minister to him going through the hardest moments of his life. I, I don't know, but, but he picked three for a reason, and I'm pretty certain by the time we get to the end of the story, they had failed him. Jesus kind of rebukes him really three times. He really does rebuke him three times. And mm, I, I, I hope, well, we'll just go on here. And he began to be troubly, be troubled and deeply, uh, what's that word, distressed. Jesus is troubled. He knows the script. Wouldn't you be troubled? Wouldn't it, listen, if you knew what was coming tomorrow, would you be more troubled? <laughs> oh yeah and I think part of the issue is that Jesus did know what was coming so he knew it was going to be brutal and awful and terrible and and I know even the son of God knew trouble hey had some effect on his emotion and his feelings his it's just it's these verses we we see them sometimes where Jesus really was emotional Jesus really was caught in the middle of that day's trouble. He cries at Lazarus' tomb. He is caught up in human feeling. And he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. Now, did he bring them as guards? Or watch what? I, you know, I'm thinking back in the day, the Rockford Files used to be on on Friday nights. You know what I mean? No, that'd be Thursday night. That'd be Thursday night, so i got to rethink that one. Stay and watch what? I'm making a joke, but it's a bad one. Look, look at this. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Now, now listen. Does your soul die? What's he saying? I think that's a deeper thought than we think. Your soul never dies, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Hebrews 2 9. You're in Hebrews. I'm in I'm in Mark, you're in Hebrews. Right, right. 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 Good. Yeah. For everyone. That's good, Dave. That added something. I don't take questions on Wednesdays. Yeah. No, go ahead. I mean, he prayed super. You know, there's all kinds of thought on that. That he was carrying the sins of the whole world? Was it his suffering, his sorrow or was it the sorrow of all the sin of was he afraid of the pain that was coming or was he really carrying the load hey that is really almost unmeasurable he had to suffer death what did it say Dave 
for everybody. Right, right. Yeah, but you're ahead of me. <laughs> All this is coming. Right. Can you but but you think he's still dealing with that? You think you think you think there's a disappointment in the heart of Jesus at this moment? That that uh, bu- 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 who uh, Tony, your, your boy's, boy's, boy's name is what? Your, your boy that sings here. Who? who? David. Is it David? David. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I pray. David, 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 David sings that song. That sidewalk. Every time I can get him here, every time he comes, I wish he'd just bring that song and sing it because I love it. And I love how he sings it. But he loved me anyway. He loved me. And I was the man who drove nails in his hands. And I was the man who shoved the crown on his head. And I was the man that he went to that cross for. And I was the man that would, be, would betray him. And I was the man who wouldn't get it right over and over and over again. And he'd have to keep loving me and working with me and loving me and working with me. Oh, I think God was... Whew. We've learned a lot about the crucifixion, but that's a couple weeks away. We'll talk about some of that coming up. Stay here and watch. Hey, now let me, I've been trying to save this for the big. What if that's the same instruction he's given us? What if that's your instruction? You stay right here, hey, and you watch. You be a watcher. You be a believer. You watch what I'm about to do. You watch my you watch my faithful. You watch you watch and see who I am. Just come on. Come on. You come with me a little way. You just come I'm calling some of you to come with me a little ways. And when I call you out here with me, I, I just want you to watch. I just want you to see who I am. I want you to see my heart. I want to see my love. I want to see my passion. I want you to see my sacrifice. Come on now. Come on. Come a little closer. Some of you, come on closer. Come on. Now watch I watch him every day I'd love to tell you what this day has been for me two people in this room know what happened to me today I shouldn't say it Jamie and I received the biggest financial blessing today we've ever received in our life Just like, I'm watching, Lord. I'm watching. Lord, I'm watching. We're trying to get to Peru, John. Hey, it couldn't have come any better, man. We're building churches in Peru, brother. God just, I'm just watching God move. I'm just watching what God's doing. I'm just watching God do his thing. I'm watching God show off. I'm watching how God moves on you and how you guys love one another and how you guys give and how you care for one another and how you call and all the stuff you do. Just, just watch. Watch how good God. Dana, watch how good God is. How's that go? I wish I could get that right. Spirit is alive. Da 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 da. But it's those lines in between that are great. Anyhow. So hey. Just watch. A few of you, Renew Street Church, a few of us have been called to come a little closer. Hey, hey, now you just stand, you stand, you stand right here and watch me. You stand right here and watch. At some point, I'm going to say, I'm going to say to you, do it like I did it. You watch me for a while. You watch my faithful sense in your life. You watch how much I love. You watch how I don't judge you. You watch how I just keep coming and just keep coming. You just watch. And at some point, I'm going to flip it back on you and say, hey, if you love me, feed my sheep. 
And he went a little farther and fell on the ground, burned out of time, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. What? Ask old Travis. He went out of here a minute ago. I don't know what's happening, but uh, ask old Travis came in here Sunday morning. I give that boy Reese cups all the time, right? He came in here with some chocolate chip cookies the other day. I looked at him and said, Travis, can I have a chocolate chip cookie? No. <laughs> what? I only made a minute. What? Oh, he's right there. Hey, Travis. Travis, there he is. Travis, can I have a chocolate chip cookie? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Travis. One. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to eat chocolate chip cookies right in front of me one day. And then I'll share. My feeling is if I give him one and then ask for it back, I'll get a no. That's what I thought. I don't know. That had to do something with this, but I forgot it. Let this pass from me. Hey. Who, who, who would ever want to endure what's before it. You know, and I, I hate to be religious, but fully God, fully man, fully fighting the man struggle. Same time knows the God job, the responsibility of fully God, knows the response, knows what he has to do. Fully man saying, ouch. Right? I mean, some of us dread... Surgery, right? We dread surgery, right? It's like, oh, Lord, you ever pray that before you go to surgery? Lord, let this cup pass from me. Let like that kidney stone, Lord. Let her drop, let her drop. Let this pass from me. Oh, you can pray this. It was the same thing. So anything that needs to pass in your body, you ought to be praying the same thing, Jesus. Never mind. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. All things are possible for you. Why is he saying that here? It's right in between, let this stuff pass from me and take this cup away from me. So all things are possible. Uh, can we renegotiate? Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. That's what he's praying. That's the big point in the whole sermon. If Jesus surrendered to the will of the Father, knowing he had this hard thing before him, we should too. And he came and found them sleeping. He came and, found, and said to Peter, uh, Simon, are you sleeping? <laughs> You're not watching. Now, I always like to take, what, what, what's the spiritual point out of this? Peter was sleepy? The spiritual part is, hey, in the, in the moment, it really applies to us. In the moment when the Lord is doing his work, we might be living in that very hour. Are we sleeping? When the Lord is doing his greatest work, when they should have been the most alert, And he goes on, could you not watch one hour? Hurry, pray and watch, watch and pray, watch and watch and pray. At least you enter into temptation, time's running out. And the spirit indeed is willing, but, my, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. You've been there, haven't you? I know I'm supposed to. I know, I know I'm supposed to. But I don't want to. Again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And he, turn, he returned and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And they did not know what to answer. It's like church on Sunday morning around here. <laughs> oh, boy, I wish I had a, a dark gun sometimes. 
shoot bean bags. Wouldn't that be so much fun to shoot a bean bag? About. <laughs> and if I missed, it'd be. <laughs> I used to preach at the jail. I'm running out of time. I really have time to tell you this. I'd preach at the jail. Now, listen to me. I would preach at the jail, and, and every one of those men, there were times when those men had tears in their eyes. They knew that, that, a, that an anointed preacher had come into the jail, and he was just dropping God on them, and they were, they were all into it. Until a female inmate walked down the hall. And she was strutting it. She was strutting it down the hall. And then. I didn't need that, but okay. Anyhow. Were you, were you one of those women? I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Anyhow. Anyhow. I got messed up. Anyhow. I'd look at those guys, stop preaching, and I'd say, are you kidding me? Sometimes I want to do that in church. Are you kidding me? What I'm speaking to you right now ought to be is some of the most important stuff you're ever going to hear in your entire life. Hey, and you're sleepy. Because that Ohio State game was on late last night. Right? I mean, that's what happens to us, Right? Hey, hey, we're all guilty. We're all guilty. I'm, I'm not leaving me out of that whole thing, you know. Oh. And he found them asleep again. Their eyes were heavy. They did not know what, how to answer him. I'm over time. Go, go, go. I got to go fast. And he came the third time, said to him, are you still sleeping? In the most important moment, hey, they probably had an opportunity here to minister to Jesus. He probably took them, hey, to watch. But in part of watching, hey, they were going to minister to him. That's why Jesus took them. They're sleeping. In a critical hour, I'm telling you, the same thing is spoken over this generation church. The Laodicean church will be asleep. That's what Peter said. And the hour has come, behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed in the hand of sinners. Rise, let's, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude of sword and clubs, you know, in my mind, I always thought it was just a few, somebody, I, I studied this one time, it's like a, a third of a regiment or something. It's possible there were 300 guards there. I mean, we think of this little thing. And then when Jesus, in John's account, Jesus says, who are you looking for? He, he said, I am he. 300 guys go, boom. John, it's in his account. I, I think at that point I get up and say, um, let's leave this guy alone. Came with the chief priests and the tribes and elders. They were going to, because it was something that had to be. And there are things in your life, this is, there are things in your life that are God things that have to happen. But I'm telling you, your flesh can cancel them. That's what's really the teaching in this. Your flesh can get away in the way. I, I've talked about Tyler. Everybody knows my story in Tyler. Tyler and I went to Peru for a month. We did some amazing work in Peru for a month, right? And I came back and John said, how did he do? And remember my answer to you? My answer was this. Tyler is amazing, but I'm worried about him. He's either going to become great or he's going to be the biggest train wreck ever. He has that in him. He has a major crash or greatness. And I say to you, that's probably true about all of us, right? And right when God wants to do, I, I'm telling you, the moment to be asleep, in our generation, the moment to be asleep is not now. It's not now. 
You ought to be on your game. You ought to be willing that everybody, every sinner God puts in front of your path, hey, is an evangelistic opportunity, you know. And every sick person God puts in your way is a healing opportunity. And everybody that's discouraged is an encouragement possibility, you know. And I'm just trying to tell you, everything, 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 if you pray in the morning and say, God, direct my day, then everything. Charlie, Charlie. Brown did it, does it so well in little devotions he'd been doing at the men's breakfast. Today, he told a story, the last men's breakfast, it was amazing, about how God gave him an opportunity to witness. And it took several months, and a real tragedy happened in it. But that girl he was witness to came to church. I got to go, I got it. And so they grabbed him and kiss him and and as soon as he had come immediately, he was out, and he kissed him. Judas, the betrayer, kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and took him. And one of those who stood drew his sword and struck off the servant's high, the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. John says the guy's name is Malchus. And Jesus answered and said to him, Have you come out against me as a robber with swords and clubs to take me? We know in John's account he puts the ear back on. But he looks at him and says, Why did you? I was in the temple every day. I was daily in the temple teaching, and you didn't see me. But the scripture must be fulfilled. And what we're talking about is the Passover lamb had to be pa- had to be Passover. It had to be. Uh, you could have got me any day. You you could have got me today in the temple. You could have got me yesterday, but you came and got me now because the blood from the Passover lambs that are being slaughtered in the town is running through this brook right here beside where you're. It had to be now that the scripture might be fulfilled. I gotta let you go. I'm over time. Those teachers upstairs are going to kill me. Father, thanks for time together tonight. We need you. There's stuff in that, Lord. Hard preaching to the choir tonight that's needed. Help us to receive it, Lord. Not our will, but your will. Help us, help us, help us, Lord, to just struggle with what we see Jesus do as an example. And help us get it right, Lord. Help us get it right, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. We love you, we love you, we love you. Come back. Come back. Hey, minister to your body. Minister to the body, would you? Call people. Stay in touch. Thanks. Thanks for coming.